What's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV and this is my Model Y review. I had the opportunity to spend about four hours with the car today and I can't wait to share some of my thoughts. Now, I'm going to try and give as balanced of a review as possible. I'm going to start with the things that I like about it and then wrap up with the, with the things that I dislike about it. But I'm just going to let you know up front that this car is very, very convincing. In fact, I'd even go so far as to say that this is Tesla's best vehicle that they've ever made. But let's jump into some of the things that I was really impressed with. The first thing is the ride height. I really like this as a taller person. Being able to just slide into the vehicle when getting into the front seat is extremely appealing. And I'm used to the Model S, which sits a little bit lower, and I always feel like I'm, I'm having to get into it, to sit down into it, whereas this Model Y is just sort of a slide in. Very similar to how I would get into a Model X. This also allows for some really nice road coverage or road perspective as you're driving down the road, you're sitting a little bit higher. It does feel like you can see a little bit more because of that ride height. I really, really like that. Now, it's not panoramic windshield view like the Model X, but it's still impressive. It's more impressive, I think, than the Model S as well as the Model 3. I really think for people who are used to an SUV, they're really going to like the Model Y. The next thing that just really blew me away is the headroom and legroom. This is in the front seat, in the driver's seat. I really did feel like there was ample room for my head and some. And as well in the back seat, the second row, there was so much room and I was so impressed. Now, I was at the launch event for the Model Y in Hawthorne, California, a little over a year ago. And that was one of the things that I did notice about the vehicle was that there was a lot of headroom for me as a taller person, I'm six foot one. Uh, but one of the things that, that was really apparent today as I was reviewing this vehicle or filming it is how much leg room and feet room there is in that second row. Now, I've got some pretty long, long feet, uh, boat feet, and I didn't have any issues with putting my feet underneath the front seats. And that's because Tesla has essentially used the same seats that they use for the Model 3, but just put them on risers in the Model Y. So it does create this really nice spacious space underneath those front seats. Now, the only caveat, the only thing that I'd probably caution you on if you're considering buying a Model 3 excuse me, a Model Y, is that there's nothing preventing something if you put something underneath those front seats there. There's nothing preventing them from sliding into the legroom of the front seats. So just keep that in mind. You probably don't want something that's going to roll around a lot underneath those front seats because it just may roll into the feet of the person in front of you. The knee room, the leg room was also really impressive. I didn't really feel like my legs were um, up a little bit higher, closer to my chest like I did when I first sat into the Model 3. That was something that I did notice with the Model Y. It just feels like a normal bench seat and that I think is ideal for most people. The headroom as well in that second row is equally impressive it's better than the Model 3. The Model 3 slopes down a little bit more aggressively where as with the Model Y because it's a hatchback, it has a little bit more room to gradually slope down as it's going to the tail of the vehicle. The auto lift gate, oh my gosh, this, you didn't know how much you missed the auto lift gate until you got into the Model 3. And the Model Y, they have brought that back. It allows for ease of access. You can remotely open the lift gate of the Model Y from the app and you can also open and close it with a push button instead of manually lift it up like you have to do with the Model 3 and you know perhaps it sounds uh, maybe maybe a little bit first world problem but it is nice to be able to have that that lift gate that hatch open up on its own as you're putting stuff in to that rear compartment and storage storage on storage, on storage in that back area when you open up that hatch. Extremely impressive, far better in my opinion than the Model 3 because of the hatch. And I managed to bring some suitcases and bags with me to demonstrate 
just how voluminous that back hatch area is. I managed to fit a large, or I guess an extra large suitcase, a medium sized suitcase, a carry on, a huge duffel bag, and a satchel with ease, without problem. The latch shut easily. I was incredibly impressed. I even laid down all of the second row seats, got into the car, and laid down just to see if I could camp in it. As a taller person, if I'm laying diagonally, zero issues. If you're a little bit shorter than me, you most likely can sleep in the back part of the Model Y uh, without ease, uh, laying down vertically uh, with someone probably next to you. But, but if you're more than six foot tall, uh, you probably won't be able to share that space unless you've got some extra uh, area there in between the second row seats laid down and the front row seats. If you've got something in there to sort of prop up your head, I don't think there's going to be any issue with two people sitting in there or laying in there rather. And um, I think the, the all glass roof could potentially be a really fun thing to look up through as long as it's not too dark and too tinted as you're laying down in that back area. But camper mode, I think it's going to work really, really well for that. All right, let's get to the things that I disliked about the vehicle. And some of these things are not really things that Tesla can, can change quickly. Some of them are, but the first one is that glossy middle console, the one that they carried over from the Model 3. I don't know of anyone who's crazy about that. It shows dust and dirt and scratches and most people that I know of that own a Model 3 have put some sort of, some sort of uh, protective wrap or, or film on it uh, to, to keep it from looking so worn. I'm just a little bit disappointed that Tesla, knowing how much people dislike that piano black console, decided to use it in the Model Y. And I'm sure that there's some cost benefit to using that both in the 3 and the Y. I just don't think that very many people like it, and I hope that Tesla changes it more to a matte black. I think that would be a little bit more palatable for the larger owner's experience. Next is that heat pump. This is something that Sandy Monroe and Elon Musk have talked a lot about here initially, and it's great. I think it's going to be a very efficient way to run the car, especially in colder temperatures, but it is quite noisy. And uh, I did record some video. I turned on the heater on high, and you can definitely hear that heat pump working. My understanding is that Tesla is going to add a jacket around the heat pump to control some of that noise, and will do that retroactively for people who have already taken delivery of their Model Ys. But still, as of today, in April of 2020, it is a little bit of a, a noise pollution, a little bit of a noise nuisance to hear that, especially when you're used to hearing nothing coming from a Tesla. The next thing that I'm not crazy about is three adults in that second row. I don't think it's going to be very comfortable, especially on longer trips. Can three adults sit back in that second row for a short period of time? Absolutely. But I do remember sitting in that second row at the launch event and my shoulder was definitely up against the person in that middle row or in that middle seat in that second row. And so that's certainly something to keep in mind. If you've got kids who are, you know, teenagers, young adults, if you carry around a lot of people in that second row, they're probably not going to want to sit back there um, for a long time because they're going to be touching up against the person next to them. I'm, I'm most certain about that. Now, my buddy who loaned me the car, uh, has three young boys. He said that they fit, he said that they fit back there pretty easily. But as these young boys grow into young adults, that may be a bit of a different story. And lastly, this third row—it's such a mystery to me. Now, Saint Amon Row thinks that the third row is going to be rear-facing. Tesla has shown, in fact, the the demo vehicles that were at the launch event, that third row was facing forward. And uh, I'm, I'm just a little bit perplexed as to how Tesla is going to execute a forward facing third row. I don't see it happening. I think it's very likely that that third row will be rear facing, which does change a little bit 
of the dynamic of how people get in. So they're not getting into that second row um, by moving the seats forward. They're getting into that third row by lifting up the lift gate and getting into that third row from the back. And, you know, as a, as a parent who, who has two young children, I do have a little bit of a concern about in the event that there is a rear end collision and that vehicle who rear ends the vehicle, who rear ends the Model Y sitting a little bit higher than that bumper, there may be some ingress into that third row. And I just, as a parent, like to know that Tesla, if they're selling this vehicle, has reinforced not just the bumper, but also the area around the lift gate. And uh, I realized that, that Tesla sold a Model S with this reinforced bumper and a rear facing, rear facing jump seats. But um, as, as a parent, I think it's my responsibility to think about the uh, safety of my children and a worst case scenario, though low probability, um, I don't think I would put kids back in that third row. So Tesla, if you're listening and you do intend on putting a third row back there rear facing, uh, it would be really helpful to know what you've done to ensure that whoever sits back there is going to be safe in the event, in the rear event of a rear end collision. Okay, that wraps up my Model Y review. I hope you really liked it. I really, really like the Model Y. In fact, when I'm up for a new electric vehicle, I like the Model Y as a, as a good suitor. I like the ground clearance. I like that there's ample headroom for me as a driver of the vehicle. I like that there's ample storage in the back, surprisingly more than I expected, but um, this to me is the best vehicle that Tesla has ever made. I suspect that this vehicle will sell extremely well and it will address a lot of people's needs in not only markets in North America, but also other markets too, who just want room to be able to fit five people and put stuff in the back of a vehicle. Sean Mitchell, All Things EV. A big shout out to Patreon supporters for funding the channel. Thank you to everyone who's watched this. If you found it valuable, please give it a share and a like, and I'll catch everyone on the next video.